So far, we've talked about low-level infrastructure, compute, storage, networking, and security. However, as a data engineer or data scientist or data analyst, you will typically work with higher level products. So let's talk about the big data and machine learning products that form Google Cloud Platform. We'll talk about the chronology of innovation, not for history's sake, but so that you understand the evolution of data processing frameworks. Knowing how these frameworks have evolved can help you understand the typical problems that arise and how they're addressed. One of the interesting things about Google is that historically, we have faced issues related to large data sets, fast changing data, and varied data, what is commonly called big data, earlier than the rest of the industry. Having to index the World Wide Web will do that. And so, as the internet grew, Google invented new data processing methods. In 2002, Google created GFS, or the Google File System, to handle sharding and storing petabytes of data at scale. GFS is a foundation for cloud storage and also for what would become BigQuery Managed Storage. One of Google's next challenges was to figure out how to index the exploding volume of content on the web. To solve this, in 2004, Google invented a new style of data processing known as MapReduce to manage large-scale data processing across large clusters of commodity servers. MapReduce programs are automatically parallelized and executed on a large cluster of these commodity machines. A year after Google published a white paper describing the MapReduce framework, Doug Cutting and Mike Caffarella created Apache Hadoop. Hadoop has moved far beyond its beginnings in web indexing and is now used in many industries for a huge varieties of tasks that all share the common theme of volume, velocity, and variety of structured and unstructured data. As Google's needs grew, we faced the problem of recording and retrieving millions of streaming user actions with high throughput. That became Cloud Big Table, which was an inspiration behind HBase or MongoDB. One issue with MapReduce is that developers have to write code to manage all of the infrastructure of commodity servers. Developers couldn't just focus on their application logic. So between 2008 and 2010, Google started to move away from MapReduce to process and query large datasets. And instead, they started moving towards new tools, tools like Dremel. Dremel took a new approach to big data processing, where Dremel breaks data into small chunks called shards and compresses them into a columnar format across distributed storage. It then uses a query optimizer to farm out tasks between the many shards of data and the Google data centers full of commodity hardware to process the query in parallel and deliver the results. The big leap forward here was that the service auto-manages data imbalances and communications between workers and auto-scales to meet different query demands. And as you will soon see, Dremel became the query engine behind BigQuery. Google continued to innovate to solve its big data and ML challenges and created Colossus as a next generation distributed data store, Spanner as a planet scale relational database, Flume and Millwheel for data pipelines, PubSub for messaging, TensorFlow for machine learning, plus the specialized TPU hardware we saw earlier and AutoML that's gonna come later. The good news for you is that Google has opened up these innovations as products and services for you to leverage as part of the Google Cloud Platform. You will practice working with these products 
in your labs as part of this fundamentals course.